So, as we can see, there are so many powerful large language models nowadays, and they're of different sizes and different strengths. So here comes the question, which models should I use for a given task? So for traditional model selection methods, um, they typically need to first train all candidate models with entire or a big amount of data, and then evaluate all of the, all of the models and observe their performance. And then, based on the observed performance, they can select the best one. So in the age of large language models, what's the problem with this? Yes, the large language models are so expensive. So we don't want to spend money to train all of the models, but then eventually using only one of them. So how can we reduce such exploration cost? And here comes a recent online model selection scheme. So um, essentially, in online model selection, we only train one candidate models each time per a batch of data sample. So given a batch of data sample, and we first predict instead of actually observe the, the performance of all models after training. And then based on the prediction, we select the potentially best models to be trained for further explorations. And here's an illustrative example of an online model selection for large language model summarization task. Suppose we have a candidate's large language models, T5 small, base, GPT-2, 3, and we are given a document for summarization. And given this document, the agent first predicts the performance of all models after being trained on this document, and then select the most promising one, for example, the GPT-2, to, uh, to evaluate GPT-2's performance on this document. And then the agent observed the rewards, for example, the Roach score, after that, the selected GPT-2 model is fine-tuned with the, this batch of a data sample. The, yeah, only, only the GPT-2 model is, fi is fine-tuned. So in this process, the most important step will be how do we select the most promising model to be trained on this batch of data samples. And as we can all see, uh, in this online model selection process, the model selection happens interactively with the model training or the model fine tuning. So it is very important to, um, to know how do we predict the model performance after training in order to dynamically change our selection strategy during the model training. So our first methods, uh, so in our first, in our method, we first need to capture such uh, increasing the converging reward trend. So I believe most of you have observed such kind of a trend in training a model. For example, in a classification task, the model, uh, the prediction accuracy will first increase rapidly and then converge to a stable state because yeah, the accuracy cannot exceed one, obviously. So in this illustrative figure, I showed a two large language models. One is a small, GPT-2 model, and one is API-based GPT-3 model. So intuitively, intuitively the GPT-3 GPT model has a much better zero-shot uh, capabilities of this task. So before any fine-tuning, the performance of GPT-3 is better than the GPT-2 model. However, after a certain amount of fine-tuning steps, we can observe that GPT-2 models, they can achieve a uh, very good performance. And then taking into account the fine tuning cost between the uh, small local model and API based model, obviously the API will cost uh, way too much than the small local model. And after a certain amount of fine tuning, we may prefer to use GPT-2 model for our task. So here comes the challenge. How do we know before any fine tuning that GPT-2 model may be better than the GPT-3 model. So we need to do a certain amount of explorations during the model selection problem. Um, because if we greedily choose the best performing models, then we are uh, choosing GPT-3 from, from the beginning and to the end. That's not the way that, I, uh, that we want it. 
So we formulate this problem uh, using a multi-arm bandit, uh, which is a classic reinforcement learning formulation. So we consider each candidate model as an arm and model utility, for example, the model performance and fine tuning cost as a reward. And we propose a non-stationary setting where the reward of an arm increases each time the arm is pulled, which corresponds to the model performance increases each time this model is selected and then being fine-tuned. And we want to balance uh, the exploration and exploitation so that we can potentially to explore the best model, even if it is low performing at the beginning stage. So we propose our time increasing upper confidence bounds algorithm. So in our algorithm, uh, the first step would be we first predicts, uh, well, given a batch of data samples, we first predict the model perform the all model performances after being trained on this batch of data, and then we use this uh, prediction added with the upper confidence bounds value, and we select the arm that we like to pull at this current stage. And then we observe the rewards of uh, current uh, arm pool. And then we, ask, we update the estimations of this arm. After that, and another, another important step will be, since we have uh, observed and want to capture the increasing the converging trends in the model training. So we want to detect the converging point and here we use a sliding window change detection methods to detect the converging points so that we can make the increased prediction or the performance prediction more accurate. So essentially the change detection is to compare uh, the increased predictions of consecutive, uh, the consecutive, consecutive windows. So if it is larger than a threshold, we consider it uh, is a change point and we reset all the estimations of this arm. And in our paper, we also provide a theoretical analysis for the concentration level of the upper confidence bound and also the rationales for the change detection mechanism. Uh, please refer to appendix of our paper. Also, uh, we proved that our algorithm achieved a logarithmic regret upper bound and yeah, due to, again, due to limited time, please refer to appendix for the detailed proof and all the other details. So in our experiments, we mainly used uh, empirical cumulative regrets as our uh, evaluation metrics. And so the regret definition is uh, intuitively speaking, so there is an optimal action sequence that each time we select the best arm and we get the rewards we compare them to our actual arm selections corresponding to the rewards we get. And we calculate the difference between them. So therefore, the smaller the regret is, the, uh, the better performance the algorithm is. And we compare our algorithm to a set of uh, bandit algorithms and also an auto ML method. So first, uh, we, uh, we design a synthetic model selection problem where we design uh, the reward functions randomly from a two function class that corresponds to the increasing and converging trend. So in figure A and C, we formulate a two arm bandit and the 15 arm bandit setting, and we show the reward functions of each arm and also their rewards corresponding to the uh, number of pools, which also means the number of time it is fine-tuned. So in the figure B and D, we show the cumulative regrets of all compared algorithms. And our proposed algorithm, TIECB, consistently achieved the lowest regrets, which means the best performance. Also, we test our algorithm in a classification model selection. We use uh, those Class, uh, conventional classification algorithms like logistic regression, knife bears, neural network. And we first formulated such model selection problem on an IMDB movie review data set. And in figure A, we showed the uh, reward functions of each classification algorithms and uh, over the training steps. 
and then we want to select the best classification methods using the uh, our proposed algorithms. And in figure B, we show that our algorithm again achieved the best performance with the lowest regret. So in third experiment, we use some large language models and uh, we formulate a large language model bandits task on a XSUM summarization data set. So in here, the reward is a bit different. We take into account the fine tuning cost besides the model performance. So the reward here will be the Roche score minus the uh, parameter, which is a setting based on the previous studies that uh, specifically we choose the API based models uh, such as GBT3 to be 100 times uh, larger than the local small models for the fine tuning cost. This, uh, this is reflected in the cho choice of M values here. And so with this formulation, uh, we get in figure A, the reward functions for each larger models over the fine tuning steps. So we want to uh, select the best uh, large language models over these fine tuning steps with the lowest uh, amount of explorations. And again, our algorithm shows the best performance with the lowest regret. We also do a ablation study on the change detection window size. So uh, as we can ob observe in these two figures, when the change de detection window size is too small, the al algorithm performs uh, not so good, which is essentially because, um, essentially because in real data sets, the model performance trend is not strictly increasing. And there's uh, so many fluctuations, up and downs, as you, as you can see in the figure. So when the change detection window size is too small, it cannot accurately predict the model performance trend instead but, but being uh, mistaken by those fluctuations. Again, we can also see that when the change detection size is too large, uh, which is also intuitively uh, easy to understand because when it's larger than the horizon of the uh, training steps, the, the change detection mechanism is not even triggered. So um, this also shows the necessity of a change detection method. And here's our findings and conclusions. So by capturing the increasing than converging performance trend, our algorithm outperforms all baselines in online model selection. And by integrating fine tuning costs into reward design, our algorithm can promisingly balance the cost and performance for practical deployment of large energy models. By customized change detection window size, we can also flexibly tackle the fluctuations in model performance during training. And that's it for our presentation. Thank you.